We are back after an extremely, extremely disappointing previous episode as we lose in the first round to the Pittsburgh Penguins. As you see, the Vancouver Canucks end up being the Stanley Cup champions, something we aspire for. A decent run for the Baby Bees, losing in seven games in the conference finals to Syracuse. But this episode, we are going to try and keep it going, just keep the flow going very quickly here, but there are a lot of things. Holy shit, Tupinen, or Tuparinen, what an absolute beast. There are a lot of things, though, as, uh, hey, Austin Strand, another award winner. I'm getting sidetracked, as, last, last note, Jack Eichel wins his award. That is now the Jack Eichel Award. But we have a lot of things we need to do. A lot of players in the core we need to look at, a lot of prospects who we really need to get some good progression through this offseason because if they don't, we might have to cut them. I want this team to be competitive. We've had so many playoff disappointments. But moving forward, again, in the interest of keeping this episode flowing, let's get into the draft. Now, rather than doing my normal kind of deal here, recapping all the picks, you'll see all the picks I make in the background, but I feel like I have to talk about this again, and that's just how bad the scouting system is in this game. It's absolutely beating a dead horse at this point. But to say it's frustrating to scout a certain area and then to still have players in the first and second round from those areas show up with little to no information there, that's just simply unacceptable. And it continues to happen time and time again. And there were points in this season where I scouted certain areas six weeks and then another couple of weeks towards the end of the season and still players showed up without any proper information. So in this draft, we get some decent players. We swing and miss on quite a few picks, including Vic Moran in the first round. And I'm not delusional enough to think that they'll be able to put the time in to get a full sim like you would see in a football manager or a franchise hockey manager. But the closer you can get to that, the better, specifically with scouting and with the draft system. There is simply not enough information there for it to essentially be worth it beyond the first season, like we just saw in my Vancouver Canucks GMO series, beyond the first season where I know Austin Matthews and Jacob Chitron are going to be amazing, it's a crapshoot from there on out. But we'll get back on track, you see the full list of everybody that we drafted in this particular draft. Let's move on to the re-sign phase. So getting things started with the people we are letting go of, and right off the bat, Sergey Jass is the first victim. He hasn't progressed the way we needed him to. He is also now 26 years old, so really there's no point in holding on to him. Our next victims, I didn't want to let go of them, but I have to. It is going to be Jaskalainen and Pakarainen. The Swedish and Finnish combo on defense, both still seventh defensemen. They are not progressing and haven't gone up to top, two top six, top six, top six. Our next two victims though, AHL top two defenders, Marja Mackey and Dawes, both guys we drafted who aren't going to pan out either from the looks of it and reach that top six potential. Forward wise, Nathan Tremblay, 26 years old, his second stint with us comes to an end. Betts also is released outright, only AHL top six. And our last victim for now, Buying out his contract is Adrian Hawes. He had a really good season for us at one point. His overall has plummeted. It's time to let him go. As far as those that we are re-signing, it is pretty much everybody. There are a couple of people who didn't accept their contracts, so we are going into the free agency period with a couple of restricted free agents. But all of our unrestricted free agents, whether it's people who were already under contract or rookies we drafted, that need to be signed or else they're going to free agency. Everybody has been re-signed, including Mikhail Soderstrom, including Marcus Olsen, Sidney Crosby, Johnny Goodrow. We're keeping the core together for the moment, but we're gonna be looking to make some big moves in the free agency period, as well as a couple of trades. But as you saw, Dmitry Valentenko refused to sign with us, so we do have to let him go as well. Not the biggest loss in the world, but I would have liked to have kept him. Now, as we move into free agency, we start off by making a trade. We have to clear up some cap space, not only to try and sign some free agents, 
but to try and sign a restricted free agent as well. Phil Kessel only has a year left on his deal, but he was purely a rental for me with a $6.4 million cap hit. Marcus Olsen, who we of course re-signed. I have plans with Soderstrom being the starter, and there is a guy in the free agent list who we'll get to in a minute that I am going to attempt to sign to replace him. And then Provorov simply overpaid $5 million. He didn't grow into the 85, 86 overall guy I would have liked. Now, Chicago, just like every other team, it's just so goddamn stingy you couldn't get anything out of them. So I switched a good prospect with the first round pick, and they took it. I didn't plan on that happening, but they took it, so that is the trade. It frees up the space, though. But moving into who we attempted to sign after freeing up that cap space, as you get a look, we do sign a prospect, Bob Weston, who has top nine forward potential. Serge Lassert, who was a restricted free agent, has resigned. Prospel, a prospect in the free agency. Rainier Burkoff was my plan for the backup goalie. He declines. He goes to New Jersey. Steve Wolf resigns. Thorburn, a free agent, as well as Kopitz. Sean Day resigns. And Mendoza, also a free agent. In the second batch of players, Nathan Beaulieu and Xavier Ouellette were two players who I was hoping would replace Provorov and both declined. Now with that said, we moved on beyond the free agency period, simmed up to the preseason, and we were desperate to add to our defense and to get at least one more offensive player. So we make another deal with Chicago, who have just made out like bandits here. It's a bad trade for us, but we send them back their first round pick, and we get a franchise potential defenseman in Maroon. Now we had to give up Grice, who we just signed, but he's only bottom six potential. Blatney, who we just drafted, same with Vorobiev and Kavanaugh as someone else who we drafted not too long ago for Maroon. But you add on the first round pick, Kessel, Olsen, Provorov, and, and the other guys you see there, essentially for this franchise defenseman. Terrible, terrible trading, but I did what I had to do to get us another defenseman after Provorov didn't work out. Sean Day is struggling to progress. We needed somebody. I went out and got him. Now, we weren't done there in terms of trading. I wanted to free up some space, and we trade away AHL potential defenseman to Winnipeg for a second-round pick. Coleman is about a 79 overall, but we don't really need him, and he's not going to grow beyond that. Lane and Lalonde, I believe we drafted a year ago, and Bentley was this year. I don't see any of them panning out. We get a pick back, but again, it frees up some contract spots. Now we have one more trade coming up here before we show you the roster and end this episode. I wanted to show you guys examples of just how difficult it can be to make trades with the AI in this game, even on, I even put this down to easy for these specific trades, just to see if this would go through and it wouldn't. Four first round picks and Sidney Crosby for Jack Eichel, Buffalo wouldn't budge. And then to Chicago, we offer them five first round picks for one elite potential guy and they wouldn't budge either. But we do end up making a trade with the LA Kings, one first round pick down the line in 2030 for Hannon, an elite potential right wing. Which brings us to the end of this episode as I show you guys what the roster is as of this moment. Our top line is now Jake DeBrusque. Gary Harper, who we drafted not too long ago, has taken a massive jump up to an 86 overall. He is our new top line center for the moment. They are with David Pasternak, who almost had to be traded. He actually requested a trade. His morale plummeted, but it's bounced back. Second line, we have a Finneganoff, now an 87 overall, with Crosby, who has dropped to an 86, and Hannon, an 85 overall for us, hoping he can grow this season. Third line, Goodrow, Bader, and Panarin. We need a big season from Bader. I'd like him to get up to an 86 overall as well, but I don't think he is going to be our future second line center. In our fourth line, we have Suglobov, Zarnik, and Muzzin, hoping for big seasons from Suglobov and Muzzin. Austin Zarnik can't help but get rid of him. 82 overall, he always performs better than that. We'll see what he can do now that he has been separated from Goodrow and Panarin. Defensively, it's looking good. Lozon and Keane, still franchise potential defensemen. We have Maroon there at an 87. He is with Justin Falk. Falk, I'm hoping he'll have a better season. Obviously, plus minus is not a great indication at all of player skill but it still was a little bit concerning 
to see him approaching a minus 30. Our third pairing is Sean Day with Steve Wolf. It was going to be a lot worse in terms of defense if we didn't pick up Maroon, so I am content with this, and I'm hoping for some progression from Day and Wolf. And the goaltenders, it happened and it happened fast. Mikhail Soderstrom is up to an 88 overall. He is elite potential at 22 years old, already a beast. He is our starter. Serge Lassert will be our backup after Rainier Burkoff declined our offer in the free agent period. A quick look at the AHL as well. We still have some decent prospects in here. Just hoping for progression, but as of now, they're just names. But Prospel, someone we just signed, Thorburn. Of course, we drafted the likes of Paris Hogan and Vic Bolaris but we need some big progression out of some of these players this year. I think that's been the real difficult part of this GM mode series is drafting people and just acquiring people who have that potential, but none of them have really turned in to that elite guy, that top line guy, 90 plus overall that we have needed. Defensively in the AHL, it's the same situation. Some familiar names, some new names. We signed to Bo Meester after we drafted him not too long ago. And Mendoza is elite potential as he was a free agent signing, but we'll see if he can turn into what we need him to. Hopefully it doesn't turn into another Sheldon Darling situation. I did look up his overall. He's now an 88 overall on the New Jersey Devils. That is heartbreaking, but we need, of course, some good progression out of everybody on this team. And that will do it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching again. I wanted to keep this off-season video as condensed as possible. The raw file was about an hour and a half. So the fact that I was able to get it down to this short of a video, I am absolutely impressed with myself because it was not easy, again, for someone who is long-winded and likes to take my time with some of these things, although some of the trades may not reflect that. I thank you all so much for watching. And in the next episode, we start season 10. Will it go well? Who the hell knows? This series has been so random for the entire thing. But if you've been with me, I hope you stick around. Season 10, I'm not sure if it'll be the last one or not. We will see. If we win the cup, though, that may be the end. We'll find that out in the near future, though, guys. Thank you so much for watching again, and I'll see you next time.